A few days later, a friend of mine said, hey, how's everything going with this process? And I goes, pretty slow, but that's to be expected. It's the pandemic. And she goes, do you mind if I have um, Terika look at some of your stuff? And I was like, the foster care tour guide? Okay, why, yeah, yeah, hold on. Why did you think she was a foster care tour guide? So I went to New Orleans. It was my second trip there. And the group of people I was with were going on a foster care tour, and she was the guide. <laughs> It was actually, I sat on the board of these houses. I used to be in the group homes. And so I wanted some I didn't know none of this. But yeah. you looked like the guy. You was guy. Definitely he looked like the guy. You, was you guiding the foster children? No, I A was little not. Bit? I was guiding them to come meet the foster children. You look like the foster care tour guy. I'm just she, saying. He did. <laughs> it was so cold in the house. I'm very cold natured. So I sat outside by myself and she came outside to sit with me. And I, to this day, I'm so glad I didn't know who she was because I really, I, oh, and whenever I work with people, I want to work with you before I know who you are because I want to like you, yeah. right? And so she sat outside with me. We talked about Hurricane Katrina. I heard her story. I was like glued to listening to her and her life, but she never told me what she did. She didn't have to. She was a foster care tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> so when the person I knew asked me, do you want Terika to look over her stuff? And I was like, well, is she in real estate school? Does she just want to look over a contract? Sure, I don't mind the foster care tour guide looking through this my stuff. This is a true story. It's a true story. I Okay, I don't mind. <laughs> so the foster care tour guy called me and she was like, hey, you are getting, what'd you call it? The hairpin, you're getting- A uh, haircut. Haircut. She actually has a more vul vulgar term for that and she gave it to me. <laughs> Screw without no Vaseline. That's what she said. <laughs> And I didn't understand why, and she was like, meet me and my husband in Chicago tomorrow. I met them the next day, and we laid hands on this property to get me out of there. We commanded the property, to, because here's the thing. Let me finish my story. This is what we found out. I purchased the property for $100,000 on March 10th. According to the county records, the property was purchased for $28,000 on March 12th. Whoa. So... The agent who represented me acted as a dual agent, which means she represented me and the seller. Oh. And she didn't disclose this to me. Now, it's nothing wrong with being a dual agent if you know that, because now you know the person doesn't have your best interest at heart and you can have a second opinion. And that was the thing. She lied and didn't tell me that she was this person. Um, dual agents have to disclose this so that you know it's a conflict of interest. And mine didn't do that. I also noticed that $55,000 of my money went to the real estate consulting company, and I found out that the same lawyer that was supposed to represent me in the contract dealings also took home $55,000 in commission from this. Wow. So far, the only rich girl in real estate was this man. <laughs> and the agent. <laughs> and the agent. <laughs> so I also noticed that the contract showed that not only was the title not in my name, it was still in the seller's name, but it also showed that there was still a lien on this property from the city of Chicago. No way. <laughs> and that the lawyer waived by, um, waived by initialing in the contract. That means that not only did I pay $100,000 for a $28,000 property, it was also never transferred into my name. And even if it was, I didn't owe the property fee and owe and clear because of the lien. Did I mention that it was also scheduled to be demolished? No way. One of the many hands that sold me this property ended up also being my contractor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now you know I had to forgive and forget. <laughs> <laughs> that means not only did this guy make a killing becoming a rich girl in real estate, he also thought he was going to pimp me in the back end by charging me blindly for construction fees. I was also never told to get a building inspection to see if this building was worth the amount of money I was told to put in it. And the agent that sold this to me Nowhere on this contract is her commission, which means that she was one of the sellers. That's what it meant. Mm. When I confronted the agent about the $28,000 purchase price, she told me that she never saw it at that price, but the record showed that that was a lie. In the contract, they showed the fees paid uh, to the state for the property, and the fees reflected the purchase of $28,000 for the property, not a $55,000 property, which, is, which she said the seller bought it for and sold it to me. Uh, that is the uh, $154,000 I learned in real estate.
Oh my That's God. when I learned she was a developer. I was so mad at Terika, I would have swung on her like, girl, why did you not tell me what you did? And why didn't you tell me to do, not do this? And she was like, you know, Terika just, I don't know. <laughs> so we flew to Chicago. Um, you know, those kind of deals are impossible to get your money back from, yeah. you know? And I just, I leaned on God and I was like, nah, they not, you not finna screw me. You not, you just not gonna do that to me. I was like, who got $154,000 cash and you just think you gonna steal that from me? Yeah. It'll never happen, I'll use you as an example. Went there, we laid hands on that building. First of all, they told us all this stuff was done. We went the next day, none of it was done. Mm. We looked through the windows, we in the hood, ain't nothing done. So then we lay hands on the building and commanded to cough up my money. I think it was the next week I got every dollar of my $154,000 back in cash. Cause I said, I want it back how I gave it to you. Don't give it back to me in pieces or payment plan. I want my money back in lump sum. So I got all that money back and today, because of the help of one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Terrica Lynn Smith, I have over 150 doors. Uh, come on y'all. And I'm a lot wiser in real estate. <laughs> That's right, she talks about too. Give me the story from your perspective. So I was not a real estate, I mean a foster care tour guide. <laughs> um, but I knew um, one of the things that angered me, you guys know that um, I um, came from a um, troubled childhood, right? So I'm always in that protection state. Like I'm always trying to protect people and things that are close to me and people that I love. And what I hate is to see people get taken advantage of and to get scammed and to lose money in any, any sense. I'm not perfect. You know, um, and we can very well lose on a deal, but we'll lose together. We're not gonna, you're just not gonna lose by yourself, right? And so when I looked at this deal and I understood everything that took place, um, and again, Tiffany was not in real estate, so she can look at all of these documents and not see any of what I have seen. Yeah. So not only did I see it, I went to an attorney in Chicago who knows the Chicago law, and I made sure that I got another opinion, and they said this is a Ponzi scheme that she's a part of. They said they can get arrested for a RICO case. A RICO case, wow. yes. And so, wow. yeah, and so what happens is, you know, I, I find that when you do good work and you be true and honest, you get, you get great returns, like good returns. You get that back to you. And I think that that's an um, example of me and Tiffany relationship is that, you know, she can be, I always say that she like 120 pounds soaking wet standing up to the world against this whole situation that took place. And I didn't even see her flinch. Like, you know what I'm saying? She was in Jamaica enjoying her life. Like, it, she literally turned it off. And so I just find, again, that, you know, the relationship we have, and it's exactly how she said it, it's from that perspective. I mean, we literally was on a porch in New Orleans, we kicked it off. Um, I didn't know how rich she was, I didn't, I didn't even care, you know? Um, and when our mutual friend sent me over the paperwork, I'm like, no, I'm going to Chicago now, we're dealing with this now. And I think that as long as you have those characters, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna do well, you're gonna do good by people. And I think that's why we have a great relationship because I don't care what she has, she don't care what I have, and we both have a lot together, and that's why we buy so much real estate, so that's, that's a relationship. I love it, clap it up.